Hello and welcome everyone. Uh, I'm Martin Klatsandre. Uh, I will be talking about features you might not know exist or, or might not know uh, are have helpful. A uh, little bit of background info about me. I'm working here in Red Hat as a software engineer. I worked there slightly over four years now. Uh, I'm working on Libvirt, actually. And you might wonder why I'm doing a presentation about compilers when I'm working on Libvirt. Uh, and you might think that I'm not an expert, right? And to that say, you are right. I'm not. Uh, I'm just trying to convey some information. This is an area that in, uh, that's pretty interesting to me. And I would like to show you what, what the things are, uh, what we can do with it, and maybe show you something that you will use and will help you in the future. So uh, let's start with a first question. Uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar with this code. If you've ever seen anything like that. Um, yeah, I forgot to tell you, uh, if you have a good question or if you ask me something, uh, there are three lovely scarves, DEF CON scarves. Uh, feel free to ask. If you ask a good question, I'll give you one. You can come for one after the, after the talk. So first question from me is, uh, what can you do with this code? What would you do if you uh, stumbled upon a hello world example for some language? What's the first thing you do? Compiler. Yeah, sure, compile. Um, so, if you compile it, um, how much time will it take? One second, two seconds. Uh, how much time will it take if you need to tweak the compilation, if you need to do something on your own? You can't use the compiler if the compiler does not do something you want to do with this code. So you have to write part of it. If you don't know how to use the compilers that are available, you have to write your own. And that would take, that would take me months, maybe weeks for some of you. Um, but what I want to show you here is that custom compilation of C code is pretty easy. I mean, um, not easy in a, in a pretty specific way, but maybe easier than you might think. So what to expect in this presentation? Uh, I'll be talking mainly about GCC and C-Lang. Uh, I'll show you what GCC plugins are, how they work, what you can do with them. Um, there will be an example. Uh, then I'll switch to C-Lang and LLVM, a little bit, little bit background info about that. And I'll show you uh, various tools that are out there that you might not know as well. Uh, you, should not, you should not expect some basic introduction about how to do GCC Hello C. I'm not going to be explaining that. And this is not going to be very language agnostic. Uh, I'm going to be mainly talking about, because it's C-Lang, so I'm mainly talking about uh, C-like langu languages. And of course, you might expect some other things that are <laughs> in technical presentations, right? Something will stop working because who knows how computers work. So. Compiling. If you think compiling is binding of COM ports, <laughs> this presentation is probably not for you, but feel free to stick around. Maybe you'll learn something new. So, to the point. Uh, you've seen the Hello World example. If you want to compile it uh, to a binary, what are the <coughs> phases the compiler will go, to, go through? Anyone? Yeah? You can generalize it a little bit. Uh, decompose the code until it yeah. sends tokens. Yeah? I, I still generalize it, uh, generalized it a bit more. So first thing you do, because there's an include, 
uh, and stuff like that, you pre-process it. After that, you parse whatever code is there. That's the, um, uh, the you, you're parsing the lexemes and, and you're doing syntax, uh, syntax analyzation and so on. Um, then you get some language, uh, then you get some abstract syntax tree or something and you can do first, first passes of the optimization. Uh, then you compile it even though it's the same word as the compilation as a whole, uh, it's being referred to as a compilation when you're changing the, when you're transforming the abstract syntax tree into a, into a, um, or assembly language, uh, into a assembly language. Yeah, sorry, for that. Then you assemble it into uh, machine code, and you link it, and of course, I did not mention a bunch of other stuff. You can do uh, several passes of optimization and so on and so on. So, from a user's point of view, as we said, it's basically just running a command. You just run clang hello c gcc uh, minus o whatever. What if you want to change something? You want to change how the compiler behaves. You wanna you want to see what the abstract, abstract syntax tree looks like. Uh, you want to do some checks there. Um, for some of the things, there are options. They are generic enough. Uh, for example, there is a, there's an option to stop after pre-processing. Uh, anyone would know the argument for that? Great, good audience. Uh, I don't have that much scarf here. Um, yeah, cool. Uh, how about to stop after compilation so you can see the assembly code that was generated? Yes, dash s. Um, but the options are pretty limiting. Uh, what if you want to do something more? Uh, you might ask, what more should I do, right? Well, you can, uh, you can enforce some per project coding style. You do not do that in... Uh, in the compiler itself, because everyone who uses the compiler would have to obey your coding style. And there are some people out there who do not think your coding style is the perfect one, even though you know that, right? <laughs> and what else? Uh, type integrity. I'm going to show you an example on that, because it's harder to explain without code itself. Uh, there are some things you might eventually, or someone else, screw up, and it can crash on you, even though compiler did not see that there's a problem. Um, I'm also mentioning custom code generation. Of course, uh, the compiler generates code, and a bunch of code, but I'm talking about custom code generation. For example, there's a, um, there's a thing that you can do. You can do over function overloading in C, uh, where you generate a different code based on based on uh, what the function parameters are and so on. You can also do custom code generation, for example, if you have a structure and you want to do uh, you want to have a function that does deep copy of that structure for every single structure there. That means deep copy means we all the pointers reallocate it and so on. And you can. Uh, you cannot do that with with uh, some parameters. Also, code completion. Um, I'm mentioning it partially because C -Lang has a C -Lang has a binary for that. You can run C -Lang comp. It's not complete. I, I'm not sure about the exact name, but you can you can run the C -Lang binary with parameters and some code and you tell it where, where you are and it will spit out all the completion options. It's being used from, from text editors and so on. So, uh, the example for the type integrity, what I wanted to mention um, is this. Let's see, uh, let's say we have, we have uh, some header file with a structure based on what you are compiling your project with, there might be some 
some, uh, uh, how should I put it, uh, some part of the structure that is there if you're compiling with let's lib something and it's not there if you're not compiling with. Right? Mm. Then you have this file with the same <laughs> file name, uh, which is actually my functions, let's say. I just forgot to change that. And you have a function that does something on that, on the structure. Also, based on whether you're linking with that library or not, you access that object that the is for is not there. And then you have main, which uh, includes those two files. And yet again, I have a problem with that. Um, and it creates some structure, initializes to nothing, and then runs, runs do something on that structure. Can you see a problem with that? Yes. What I wanted to show you here is, if you look at um, my hands are shaking. Let's let's try this. Where do you define this with clip something? Is yeah, it's usually it's usually defined in config h, right? right. Okay. So config h included in the platform? It's not, and that's the problem. All right. So for example, uh, in here. The structure, the, the file that gets included, will have everything based on the config. Right, but the ordering is wrong, right? If you yeah. include so it here, like this. That will not work, right? Yeah, if you include it in here, and I forgot to switch those two lines, it's handwritten. Yeah, because I wanted to do the smallest, smallest example possible. Uh, if you switch those two lines, the first thing that gets included is my structure. And then the function. So if you if you create a structure, it will not have this this pointer in there. So if you call the function on the structure do something, it does actually something. Uh, it's trying to access a member of that structure that was n that's out of bounds of this structure. So you get a cycle, right? Excuse me, I still don't understand. The file on the right top side, that's supposed to be a header file or a C file? Uh, this should be my... So that's a this should be a C file. That should that's a C file. Yeah. Um, what, what? I wanted to do both header files and C files, and I, and I forgot to... Like, if it's a C file, then we would not be including the C file, the main dot C. If it's a header file, it would not be containing the, the yeah. value of the function. You're right. This, this should be... Uh, C file, and there should be uh, part of it that there should be also header file which includes uh, config h, for example. So the thing, the the point here is that you can have two files, and in each of those files you have the structure with the same name. You can pass a pointer to the structure, but they will, from both files, it will be visible as a different, uh, as a, as a structure with different sizes. Did I explain that correctly? Yeah. Uh, sorry for that. I mm, I wanted to. A friend of mine told me that I should show you the type enforcement uh, to, or the type integrity check. So I just tried to do it as fast as possible. <laughs> Uh, because I've, it's imagine if I if I tried explaining this without the code, it's it would take much longer. Uh, you may say it's very rare. Yes, it's, it is very rare. Uh, it should probably not happen. Um, it is that kind of should not happen type of problem, and debugging this is probably not that easy. And GCC will fire a warning if you run it with FLTO. So if it does lean time optimization, uh, I'm not sure about the details, uh, but it, um, it does check some, 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 on some uh, 
structures and, and, and it will find out basically that it's not the same structure and it's exit from those two places. So, uh, I mentioned GCC. A little bit of overview, GCC is a new compiler collection. It has a bunch of tools in it. Uh, it can compile a lot of languages. And, for example, there's GCC, that's the whole package. G++ for C++ compilation it can compile Go, uh, Java, Ada code, and so on. And it also has a, has a tool chain. <coughs> Tool chain, th those are basically the tools that the, GC the GCC runs in order to go through those phases, those phases I mentioned earlier. For example, CPP does the preprocessing, uh, AS does the assembly, uh, LD is the linker, AR archiver, and so on. You probably know that, right? Uh, you can turn on verbose compilation with minus V, and GCC will show you uh, each one of those tools that's being run with the parameters and a bunch of other info. Mm. So, compiler phases in GCC. Uh, let's just go through that quickly. Uh, there's there are language-based passes there, uh, which, as I said, it's, it depends whether it's G++, GNU Go, and so on. Uh, the language gets parsed into a abstract syntax tree which is, um, which is called generic because most, it's not very generic because not every single code uses that directly. There are some <coughs> what's in it there. But it's a generic tree uh, that's, and it's the abstract syntax tree representation that, we can, that you can work with. And there are some language specific trees uh, and other information that gets passed with the generic tree to other layers. But this is, this is language dependent. When you have generic tree, you can run it, and whatever the language is uh, on top of that, you can run it through the other passes, which one of them is called uh, gimplification. That's basically uh, transferring that generic tree into a, into a uh, tree address, uh, tree address representation Anyone knows why it's called Gimple? G I M P E L. I first thought it's uh, it's generic implementation, but it's probably not. It's based on some earlier simple language that did not have go to and some other things. So I'm referring to that as a simple with go to. Um, and of course, there are other passes. Uh, SSA, RTLs, those are uh, various optimization phases and so on. And then the assembly. We're, we don't need that in, in the detail. Let's switch to CLANG and LVM. So CLANG for c -like languages is a binary uh, that uses um, libclang. Also part of CLANG are libformat and libtooling and other libraries that you might use. And some binaries like uh, C-Link format that does something like indent, if you know it, a little more intelligently. Uh, C-Link tidy, it can fix some stuff for you and so on. And that's basically, if you, if you, uh, I might have it on the next slide. I'll wait with that. And then you have the LVM, which is, which is um, low level virtual machine. Um, that has its own tool chain. Mm, it also has, has its own language, which is not, uh, it's, I can't say it's even similar to Gimple, but uh, let's not go into details. Uh, you have a bunch of binaries that you can use for assembling the assembling the bytecode, and it is all bytecode. Uh, you, can, you can compile it into that bytecode, and you can uh, interpret the bytecode, so, it might be similar to Java for someone. But this is not used by default when you run CLang file.c. Uh, the presenter stopped working. No, I don't know. Oh, OK. So uh, CLang does, does the, uh, if you recall the previous 
slide for GCC and the phases. And here, ceiling does that does that language specific parsing. Uh, if you want to use LLVM, you should use minus minus emit LLVM, otherwise it will use the uh, linker and assemble, uh, assembly that's in the system, and it will get normal binary. With emit LLVM, you will emit then a LLVM language. Uh, for your low-level virtual machine, the LLVM language is uh, something that's used in the bytecode, and as I mentioned, it has the, the bytecode interpreter, so it can work like I, I'm, I'm hesitant to say like Java because I don't want you to throw oranges at me. So, quick recap, what did we learn? Uh, so we learned what GCC is, you probably knew that, right? Uh, roughly how it works. Uh, the same for CLang and LLVM. What are similarities? You, there are similarities, of course you have to do similar things <coughs> With a code, if you have this, if you want to have a similar output, right? But the so the similarity I'm referring to here is that there's a split between language specific and language agnostic part, and also what the differences are. Everyone, uh, uh, every part of it looks different and works different. So, um, what do those compilers expose? that you can use to somehow use the power they have in, in themselves already, so you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Uh, GCC has a plugin API. You can write a plugin for uh, GCC and interact with what GCC does. Uh, CLang can do the same uh, way, way differently, believe me. Uh, then there's libclang. As I said, clang, clang is uh, is, a, is the binary, and it comes with libclang. It uses libclang, but you can use it as well. Uh, the nice thing from them is that basically uh, clang is just small, relatively binary on top of libclang, and libclang does most of the hard work, and it's exposed to you, so you can use it. And there are other 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 libraries like libtooling for reformatting and actually not reformatting, but refactoring the code, libformat for reformatting, and so on. So really, really super short introduction to GCC plugins. Uh, GCC plugin is just a module that has plugin in it. GCC calls DL open on it, uh, calls the plugin in it, and you can then register callbacks for different events. Uh, those events may be that something's happening, or it may just be a reaction to GCC asking you something. We'll, we'll get to that. Uh, and, use it, and you use it like this. You just uh, run GCC with F plugin, path to the plugin, and that plugin argument name equal value and oh, okay. and this creates an argument for you that you can use in that plugin. Uh, of course, you can pass more of those. So I'm not sure you will see this, uh, but it will be in the presentation, and I can show you after the, if we get to demos. Uh, what I want to show here is that basically you include GCC plugin H, you need to define plugin is GPL compatible, otherwise it will not load. Mm, there, it ha there has to be the symbol, but doesn't matter what it is and if you use it or not, it just checks if there's the symbol. Uh, there's the plugin init function, you get the arguments from the command line, you get some information about GCC version. Um, and you can register a callback to some events. I chose plugin finish just to say goodbye after, after the plugin finishes. There are a lot of things uh, 
a lot of things you get in, in those structures that you can use. Um, and, well, we'll see. I don't think we need it now. So the plugin compilation is pretty straightforward. Uh, minus shared is enough to create a shared, shared library. Um, this part here is to show GCC where to include the file from. Uh, so you run the GCC you want to use the plugin for, and if you use print file name, plugin include, it will it will print the uh, the path to that include directory with with uh, all the header files. And then if you want to use it, as I said, you run it with F plugin. I chose to compile the same thing here, just to see the difference. And the only difference is, is this parameter. And this is the output you will get. Or I got when I tried it. So, a uh, little bit of info about to what we can react. There are the events, as I said. There's, uh, I use the plugin finish. There's, uh, there's plugin info event, which is, as I said, some not, not even that's happening, but GCC is asking you for information about your plugin so it can output that information into uh, verbose logs and whatever else. And another, another event is plugin pass manager setup, where you set up passes you want to react to. So don't, uh, don't mistake events for the passes we were going through. There are there are passes for that. And there are way too many other events that it's, today is not enough time to cover all that. Um, then there are, then there are those passes for Gimp, there's pass, and even more others. That's all to be found in a documentation. Let's switch to CLang. CLang is, as I said, library used by, uh, libclang, sorry, is library used by uh, CLang itself. And what was a good thing is that it's it's public library. And another good thing is that it has a stable API. Apart from the, the CLang plugin API, you can write plugin, but it will not work in the future. Uh, LibCLang has a stable API. However, it has very sparse documentation. Uh, I read somewhere that the developers themselves uh, see the source code as a documentation and you, ca you get automatically generated oxygen. And that's it. Uh, there's one presentation from some LLVM, uh, LLVM conference where it's very nicely shown how we can parse something. That's it. Uh, but What's nice is that there are Python bindings. And what can you do with Python bindings? And for example, IPython, you can introspect the code. If you don't know what this function does, you, you, uh, with IPython, you uh, put question mark there, and you get the doc string. And it's easier and faster than, to, than searching through the documentation. So, uh, so I chose to show you an example of Python. Uh, what you need to do always after you after you import C C index is you create a new index and that index is able to parse a file. Uh, you can give it parameters. It's usually you usually pass the parameters you get from command line. And then uh, it that, create, that creates a translation unit. Uh, the translation unit has something that's called cursor in it, and cursor basically, I view it as a pointer to the abstract syntax tree, and you just call a function on that cursor, we just call a function on that cursor here, and that function uh, basically takes the node the cursor point, points to, see if it is, it's, it's coming from file, if the file name is the same as here, then, uh, yeah, if it's not the same as here, we return because we only want to output information about the file. And then we see if it's structure declaration. 
uh, for example. If it's structure declaration, we output the line and column and the name of the structure. That's it. And now we get in, and of course you have to traverse it to, to through all the children because it's a tree. And this is a few lines and you get, for example, all the structures. Um, so this is just a quick, quick example. Um, some interesting plugins I found over there. Uh, there's Dragonag GCC plugin, which is plugin for GCC that will output LLVM code. So you can use LLVM uh, bytecode <coughs> using GCC. And, then, and that means you can use uh, GCC as a front end for all the languages it can use. It can parse into LLVM. I don't think it's finished yet, but the plan is supporting all languages. There's GCC Python plugin. Uh, which I did not mention earlier for a reason. Mm. Since GCC switched from being written in C to C++, uh, I'm not sure how it was used earlier, but now GCC Python plugin is quite hard to use. Uh, for me, I did not dive into details, but it's basically uh, Python compiled as a plugin for GCC. You load that plugin, as an argument, you give it uh, you give it a path to your Python script, and it runs Python, executes that Python script, and from that Python script you can react to all those passes. What I forgot to mention with those passes, you can uh, replace them also. Not only check what they are doing, but replace them with your code and generate something else. Uh, there's EXRs, the XR ceiling plugin from Mozilla, if I'm not mistaken, and it's basically for large codes, uh, a code search, and and how should I put it, a navigation tool for, for example, for Firefox. A, yeah, uh, another plugin I wanted to mention, and I mentioned it, uh, this GCC plugin, and I think in examples or extras. Uh, that can that will do that uh, function overloading in C. So you're not using C++, you're using only C, but you have function overloading. Um, so, now we can get to demos. We've got still a few minutes. So I can show you some of the things we went through. So, pretty quickly because we have like seven minutes if I'm not right. Uh, okay. So <laughs> is this visible? Yeah. Readable? So um, I mentioned those C lang uh, format and C lang tidy uh, binaries. Let's start with those. I have some ugly code in here. Uh, as you can see, there's there are a few problems. It's the indentation isn't right. Of course, it's the easiest one. Um, this this initialization is basically deprecated since 1998. Um, so there are few small problems with it. Mm. If I copy that here and do CLang um, format on it, it outputs quite nicely. Uh, you can specify so many parameters to that and, and, and change a lot of things I just wanted to show you that it's it's easier easy to use. You can also you can also call a tidy, which will not only tell you what the problems are, that there's an old style old style field designator for X and Y, but if you run it with fix it will apply two of those suggested fixes. And that means
that means it will fix it for you. There are a lot of fixits. If CLang is able to provide a, which is called fix it, and what, what's wrong, basically it looks like this. There's a problem and this is a fix it for it. Then, then CLang, uh, CLang Tidy can fix it for you. What else? That's the, I've got the uh, script here that I showed. I don't see a left column here. I'm not sure whether you see it. But it's basically what we went through there. Uh, let's use it on that ugly C file. Um, yeah, one, one thing I did not mention. I'm not sure whether, whether libc uh Python bindings are available for Python 3. I only have them for Python 2. So if you cannot import it, be sure you have Python 2 run. And because, well, that was just one structure, you get this uh, structure point is declared on line 6, column 8. If we were, uh, if we were to change it to uh, and delete this, you would see that it goes through, that, that, was, the, that was the skip for files other than RBC we'll see that it will output a lot of things. Everything that gets pre-processed and included gets output. Um, to show the GCC plugin, well, as I said, this is how I compile it. The, I don't think I need to show you how the plugin looks like, right? It's, it's the same thing. Um, One thing to mention that I forgot to mention, um, this is how it works, but if you only use this and do not put path in there on the final name, final name, it will not be able to load it because it is not in this path. This is a path where this will output a path where you need to install your plugins in order to, in order for GCC to be, uh, to be able to find it without a relative or absolute path. Well, we don't have much time left, so let's get this. Where did I put the? Yeah, here. Um, it was just really fast fast uh, few demos because I want to show you show you the documentation links and tell you something else uh, so there are, there's more info you will get those slides posted on the DevCon website um, the first is linked to GCC internals documentation uh, the second one is as I said uh, the libc link doxygen automatically generated without any how to use it uh, I want to mention uh, Eli Bendersky's website. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing it incorrectly because I don't know him personally. But uh, basically that guy posts a uh, lot of very interesting information there. And, and so, so there's uh, valuable information about libc Lang and other interesting stuff. And the last one is uh, the link to GCC Python plugin and some information about me if you want to contact me. Uh, as I said, I'm not an expert in this. I just want more people to be interested in it and I want to continue that work to create something usable. Uh, quick recap, we learned how compilers can help us. Uh, what we can do now, we, we are able to write the GCC plugin, we know where to find the documentation, so we can do some stuff with uh, the C code. We know how to use this libc -lang library and some other tools that you might implement as uh, syntax checkers for your project or uh, use for refactoring. Uh, you know where to find more info and most importantly, uh, you got the contact from me and that's a reference to who not to blame if it doesn't work for you. 
because that's not my fault. So I want to take you back to that first code again. Woo! Misbehaves. Let's look at the code again. What can do we do with it now? We can do the same thing. But we know a bunch of other stuff we can do with it. We can change it in compile time. We can list information about it and so on. And it will not take much time. We have the documentation, we know the tools, and so on. So what I wanted to leave you with is my first idea on the first slide, that custom compilation of C and C++ is easy. And that's it. Thank you. Should you have any questions, feel free to ask me. Yes? I will we'll probably discuss it here. Or if you have any other questions, feel free to catch me here or somewhere else during the conference. Thank you. Vyčerpal jste do poslední minuty, ani ti nezbyl čas na dotazy. <laughs> I have not tried it, but um, I think it's possible. Yeah, sure. We'll, let's move somewhere else so, so there's a. Yeah, sure. Yeah, right. I have yeah, I have So you can use this if you Yeah? Because I remember I have it and I wanted to make it. Very good. It's good to have it around. Okay, okay. I, I give it. Okay. I want it. Like yeah, you can I don't know. Use, uh, <laughs> I think there is a. Yeah. So, um, yeah. I, want, I want to so somehow automatically fix that. With the red, you can press it. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's why I want to mention it if you like. Yeah, 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 it's uh, also for paging. It's a plugin. Okay. You can yeah. approach it wide because you just, you just, you just configure C plugs and it gets run for all the files. Talk, tell us what you're doing. Let's keep it. You mentioned that you have the old. That's the second desktop, I see. Yeah, but it does more than just that. I guess it's uh, your second desktop. Or? Oh yeah. No, ale pořád neutíkám do mikrofonu. A myslím, že většinou se ti lidi zdržují opravdu tady. Zatím, zatím jsem slyšel. No to mám musel, ale já mám učení všechno, takže momentálně poslouchám o zoměstnosti. Ale já jsem zvyklý přednášek. Ale garantuju vám, že si přednášek nic nevíte. Víš, že snažíte tak je všechno do hromady. To se nahrává, já myslím, že to má nastavení, že to nahrává videozor podle rozdrohu. 
Všichni by se měli na rohu, když si to